Well, you know, I, I teach at the Harvard Business School and we try to organize everything according to the things you think about least, but they're most important. In business, that's certainly true. And what everybody's talking about is what they missed from before the pandemic they want to go back to, and all the things they hate from the pandemic that they don't want to go back to. But that's the wrong way of thinking about it. The opportunity is all the stuff you didn't like from before that you don't want to go back to and the things you want to keep from the pandemic. So we need to each have a kind of a strategic plan for our lives. Make a list of the stuff you hated from before. You know, the unproductive relationships at work, you know, the people you hung out with just by inertia. Look, if you're, if you're finding that you're relieved not hanging out with certain people or doing certain things, maybe you hated your book club, but you've been doing it for 10 years, make a list of that stuff and simply don't go back to it. This is the right way to, to use any opportunity to get happier. One of your uh, items on the checklist is collect your, your data. What, what does that mean? Well, what that means is actually doing kind of a, an inventory across your life. One of the things that we're really, really good at is lying to ourselves. <clears throat> Turns out we're pretty good at lying to other people too. But we lie to ourselves because of just the inertia of life. You know, we're going along, we're getting along. We don't want to rock the boat by, you know, quitting jobs or moving or doing all these really, really hard things. But, but guess what? That boat got turned over by the coronavirus epidemic. And a lot of people are thinking, you know, there's, there's, I'm sort of relieved at some of the things that I'm... So the things that you're relieved about that you're not doing because of the coronavirus, that's your data. Write these things down. Take a list. Take... Take the whole weekend and write down the things you don't miss, and then also write down the things that you kind of like from the coronavirus epidemic, and then say, say to yourself, which of these things can I actually adopt as a kind of a new normal, uh, and start making plans? I've been thinking a lot about this. Do, do you think that we're going to be more adventurous, if you will, uh, coming out of the, of the pandemic, mm -hmm. or are we going to be cautious because we all have PTSD? Yeah, I think some people actually are going to throw caution to the wind because they recognize that, like, you never know. Yeah, I mean, when you think about it, I mean, I, I have my students are all in their late 20s, some even early 30s. And they say, well, ah, like this has never happened before. That's wrong. Every 10 years, something like this happens. You know, in 1990, it was the meltdown of the Soviet Union. Couldn't have happened. And then approximately a decade later, it was 9-11. And then it was the financial crisis. Now it's the coronavirus epidemic. In 10 years, another big thing is going to completely dislocate our lives. We just don't know what it is. You got to live for now. It's very important that people make a list of the things that they don't want to do that's making their lives worse and not be caught up in this kind of law of motion that says if you're doing it, you always have to do it. That's wrong. Life is short. I'm wondering about the turnover in, in our jobs, whether you think this is going to push people to, you know, chase new goals and dreams that they've thought about but never had the guts to take that next step. Yeah, you know, we have a little bit of data on that. So coming out of World War I and the, and, and the Spanish flu <clears throat> at the end of the, you know, the 1918, 1919 period, the 20s was a pretty roaring period. It was a pretty roaring period of entrepreneurship, actually. And what we found is a lot of people had this kind of, look, you never know, sort of mentality. I mean, millions of people died from the, from the Spanish flu. Even more millions of people you know, went off and died in the First World War. And so people, it kind of changed their attitude. And I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that people will look at the coronavirus epidemic as an opportunity to, to live their dreams and to be happier people. Good food for thought as we think about life on the other side of the pandemic. Arthur Brooks, thank you very much. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.